Hello, welcome to Tech Booth. Today we are looking at the Godox TT600 Speedlight, probably the best budget friendly Speedlight out there today. This is the TT600, very simple to use, manual flash. It doesn't have TTL for those who are familiar with photographic terms. If you're not, don't worry about it. Just know it's a simple flash, very easy to use. The TT600 is also what you would call a universal flash. And what that means is it's compatible with a wide range of cameras. I've used this on a Nikon, I've used it on a Canon, and I also use it on a GH5 from Panasonic. It is powered by four AA batteries on the side. On the side, you've got your PC sync port. It uses a headphone type jack, 3.5 millimeter, and you can connect this to your camera remotely via the cable and fire this unit off that way instead of putting the unit on top of your camera. And this is the wireless control port to use with wireless triggers but you really don't use it because this unit already has built-in wireless capability for receiving and transmitting. On the front you have an optional DC charging port so you can connect an optional battery pack to this port so that you power it using a much bigger power source than the AA batteries and it can last you longer. The flash head is a simple. You have the usual uh, flash head that you get with any speed light. You also get the usual um, diffusion panel, this, and that helps to spread the beam out when it's down. You also get the white uh, bounce card so you can shoot up and have light bounce off. And it helps in situations where you don't want direct flash or you want that catch light in people's eyes of the flash. And those just slide back down like this. Okay, let's dive into the menu and the user interface of this unit. On the far right, you've got your on and off switch. And the first time you switch it on, it will default to the manual mode, which is the mode that you're going to be using this flash most of the time. And immediately you switch that on, you can have this on top of your camera and you get going. It's already functional and can be triggered by your camera. And to control the flash power, you just rotate this dial and you can see it changing all the way up to full power and all the way down until it goes off and there are some situations where you want this off not firing. The way the different buttons work is that they control different functions. Very simple, whatever is written on the button is what you get. And one thing to note is that when you short press, you get access to whatever is at the top. There's a line, if you can see, between the functions. So when you short press, you get what's on top when you long press, you get access to what's at the bottom. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is the mode. Now when you press this once, you go into multi-mode. In photography, this is called the stroboscopic mode. And basically what that means is this flash will fire off multiple flashes while your aperture on your camera is open. And these two figures tell you that the flash is going to fire eight times at 10 times per second. That's what 10 hertz means, eight times and 10 times per second. You probably won't use this much in your photography unless you want to be very creative. But these are the kind of images that you can get when it is in multi-mode. So let's go back to the manual mode by just short pressing that. Now when I long press, I get access to the wireless mode and you can see that wireless function flashing on the interface. And when I move this dial, I now get access to the different 
functions that are available. When you see M, that means you are in master mode. So this flash unit is now set to control other speed lights. And you see here, it now says channel 18, SH18, and up here it says group M. When it's group M, that means this flash unit. If I want to change this group, I just short press repeatedly and you can see the groups change. And there are five groups available, A to E. If I want to change the channel, I just long press until it starts flashing and then I can turn this dial for that to change. So in master mode, this flash unit is controlling other flash units. And for that to be able to work, they must be on the same channel and on the same group. And while I'm in the master mode, I can control the different power settings of this flash unit. And you will notice there's an option for switching the flash off. So you can control other flash units. So this will act as a uh, flash trigger for other units via radio. And this flash will not fire itself. So it is just being used as a controller. But if you want this flash to also go off, then you change the power settings for this flash unit. For you to be able to change from the master mode to a slave mode, you need to have this activated. So you need to long press again. Now it's flashing. When I turn the dial, I can go into another mode called the slave mode. And once it accepts that a slave mode, you will see again we have a group and a channel. But this time in slave mode, this unit is either being controlled by other speed lights or it is being controlled by a flash trigger. So here we are with an X2T Godox from Godox, a compatible flash trigger. This will work with this flash unit. And just as I mentioned about uh, the master mode, about the group and the channel, for these to be able to work together, they must be on the same group and on the same channel. This one is on group A, so I just go to the top of my X2T, press group A, and it becomes activated. And then I go into the menu and scroll to the channel. This one is on channel 21. So this one is on channel 14, so I need to change that. Press set, activate that, and go to channel 21. That means now this unit is now being controlled by this flash trigger. And the first thing you notice is the flash has gone into an off position. That's because on the trigger, that group is turned off. You can see there's, there's no number there. You can see group A is turned off. So I need to go and press set and then press mode. And it cycles through the different modes. Right now it's TTL. This is a manual flash, so it doesn't have TTL. So I press a mode again. Now it's in the manual mode and you can see the flash power right there. So if I come out and press group A to activate it, if I move anything on this using the dial at the bottom, you can see it's changing on the flash itself. So let's look at that. If I move this, you can see the TT600 is responding to whatever I'm doing. So that's slave mode. You use it when you are controlling your speed light with another speed light or with something like this. And you usually have this off camera. The next one is your zoom. It says exactly what it means. When you short press it, you activate the zoom function. And when you move this, 
zoom level changes from 20 all the way up to 200. So 200 will be a narrow beam and 20 will be a wide beam. And then you can just press set to accept. If you long press, you go into a different mode that gives you access to several functions. The first one is your sleep. And for you to move through the different functions, you use your set button. You get your sleep, when you press set, you go into your focus assist beam. You go into your beep, if you want your unit to make a noise when things are done, when it goes off. You get your backlight, that's the light at the back, right now it's off, I can turn it on. You go into your optical sync mode, it's off or sync one, sync two, and off. So let's go back to the beginning. Sleep is uh, self-explanatory. The focus assist is the light that comes out from the front of your flash to help you focus. So when you are in low light situations, you can use the unit to help you focus using the focus assist beam which is located right here the beep is also uh, either on or off you get the backlight it lights up the user interface now the optical sync you have sync one and sync two what both of these do so let's set that and exit you can just press that to exit now it's in s2 in the optical sync mode you activate the optical sync sensor which is located right here at the front and this senses when another speed light goes off and when that happens this unit also goes off there's s1 and s2 when in s1 mode the unit will go off at the first sight of any other unit going off. Now that can be a problem because sometimes your uh, other speed lights are set to either TTL or red eye reduction. What TTL lights do is that they emit two flashes. The first one or the pre-flash is the one that's used by the camera to measure how much light is needed to light the scene. And then the second one is the main flash that's actually used when you take the picture. So if you're an S1 and you are using uh, automatic flashes that have something called TTL or they're set to red eye reduction, this unit will go off as soon as it sees that first light. And the problem with that is it might not recycle quickly enough to respond to that main flash that comes afterwards. And so you won't have the proper exposure when the main light goes off because the flash has already gone off using that first one. So most of the time you use S2, it will wait until the second flash, the main flash goes off let's move on to the next button it has mf and h on it remember i talked about uh, when we were in this menu we talked about this function fc which is the focus assist and that shows you how long that focus assist light is going to be on so if we exit this the mf refers to that focus assist light so when i press that you see a little bulb go on and when you look at the front of the flash unit the light has come on so this is the light that will help you focus in low light situations and to switch that off you just press it again and it goes off and then the next function below it long press takes you into a mode that's called uh, high speed flash sync High speed flash sync is a whole tutorial on its own, so we won't get into that. But just an introduction to it. Um, whenever you're using the flash and you go above a certain shutter speed, 
you start getting a problem of bending on your photo. And what that is, is the problem of the flash not going off fast enough to sync with the shutter speed. Like I said, it's a whole tutorial on its own to see what that happens. The last button is this red one here. It serves two functions. When it's on, it means the flash is ready to go off to be used. So when I press, it goes off. Speed lights or any lights that I use in photography have something called a recycle speed. And that is the time it takes between a speed light going off like this and it charging back up and be ready to use. The shorter the recycle time, the better the flash unit. And as your batteries start wearing down, this recycle period gets longer and longer until it is almost unusable. That's it. The Godox TT600. Budget friendly and very user friendly. Simple to use for beginner photographers or if you just want to add another simple flashlight to your arsenal of speed lights. See you next time on Tech Booth. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share.